Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Steph, and this is Theo. We are a married lesbian couple from Vancouver, Canada, and we are the creators of Let's See the World. So for today's video, we are answering a question that we get all the time and we figured it could use a long answer and we figured we could do a whole video about it because there's a lot to say. There's a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> so are we planning on having kids? This is something that we get asked all the time and it's something that we've obviously thought about and talked about a lot over the past 10 years of being together. It's definitely not a decision to take lightly and Katie and I have talked a lot about this and gone into depth with every scenario. So we definitely know where we both stand and we're very confident in our answer to this question. And luckily we also have both always agreed and we continue to check in to make sure that the other person you know, feels the same way that they've always felt and hasn't changed their mind and we've always aligned on this from the very beginning and that's something that I think is so important because both of you either have to be on board or not on board, it's such a huge decision. Definitely. But ultimately, we are choosing not to have kids. Except we're dating. I think the biggest reason for that is that neither of us feel particularly called to be mothers and it's not something that we feel like we have to do, it's something that we feel like we should want to do and neither of us want to. Yeah. Growing up, obviously, there was always this expectation that as a woman, I would have a baby, I would be pregnant, I would have a baby and become a mother. And being a lesbian, I just assumed that I would have a partner who would be pregnant and carry the baby because I never felt particularly called to be pregnant. Um, and I kind of just figured, well, that was my out. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I never really considered what being a parent would look like for me and the more I really started to think about that and, and what that would look like in my life, I knew that it didn't really fit into the life that I wanted. I think it's so interesting because growing up, I felt the same way. I felt like I would just one day grow up and get married and have kids and it's just kind of what you think you're going to do, just this natural part of adulthood and you never really are taught to stop and think whether or not you want that. You aren't really taught that it is a choice, or I didn't really feel like that anyways. It, it didn't feel like something I could choose to do or choose not to do. It just felt like something that everyone did when they grew up. And so I think I thought that that would be my life. And then when I grew up and got into the relationship that I knew I was gonna stay in and really started to ask myself what I wanted for my life and what actually felt right to me. I really just gave myself space to explore what I really wanted and I came to the conclusion that I don't I don't want to be a parent and that that's okay. And I think now at this point we're both in our 30s and we have a really good sense of ourselves and a really good sense of what we want for the future both as individuals and as a couple and it's just not something that fits into our life and we're really working to talk more openly about that, feel more comfortable talking about it because there still is a lot of pressure on women to be mothers and it's not really something that is really celebrated, a woman's choice to not become a parent. I think it's really important that we both gave ourselves permission to really think long and hard about the choice we had because ultimately it is a choice and like you said, it's so often just a given that women are expected to have kids that a lot of people forget that it, it is a choice at the end of the day. So, Yeah, it definitely should be. I do think society still really sees women as caregivers before anything else and so people think that the natural path for women is into motherhood even though that's not what suits every woman and not all women feel called to be mothers and that's okay. With the feminist movement in the 70s and into the 80s, this idea of women having it all was everywhere. The interesting thing with women having it all though is that it was always having something on top of being a mother. So this idea that women can have the career while also being the mother and the caregiver and the homemaker. It was always a discussion of, well, what more can we add to a woman's <laughs> plate? What more can women do? Right. But at the end of the day, that core job was always be a mother, be a wife, and those are first. And then, yay, if you can have the career, that's great. Right, that's so true. Yeah, and I think we don't allow enough space for 
the women who don't want that or for the women who want to have it all but having it all looks like something completely different because for me the way I envision my life I see myself having it all but it looks entirely different than what another woman's having it all might look like and for me having kids is not a part of it that's not what having it all means to me I still feel like I can live a really happy and fulfilled life without having that Right, we're not making a sacrifice by choosing to not have kids. It's just not what we feel is necessary for our life. But we're not missing out by not having kids. We're not giving up the having it all. It's just for us, having it all looks like something different. There is a ton of societal pressure on women to have kids. And as you can imagine, when there are two women in a relationship, <laughs> that pressure is doubled, doubled. at least. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. I feel like we get all those questions times two. And people have a really hard time understanding that neither one of us want to have kids. And obviously it's great that we agree, but I do think there's this idea of like, oh, well, doesn't one of you want to? And then you could kind of convince the other one and do it anyway. And I just think, I mean, it's such a it's such a huge decision. It's really so important to have both people in the relationship on board if that's something you're gonna do. So if one of us really wanted to and the other one didn't, I don't think that's something that would work in the dynamic of our relationship. It's really important that we agree and that we've always agreed and that we continue to agree and that's why it's something that we keep talking about and we keep checking in on and we keep discussing just to make sure that where we stand is in sync with one another. Yeah. While there's definitely a lot of pressure on the two of us because we're both women, I do think that Katie gets the bulk of the questions. Yeah, I think so too. And I think that, I mean, I don't think we have a huge difference in like how we present as women, but probably because I present a bit more traditionally feminine than Steph does, I think I do get the bulk of those questions and the bulk of the pressure because people probably assume if we were to have kids and if one of us were to be pregnant, it would probably be Katie because she's the more feminine of the two and Steph's a bit more of a tomboy and she wouldn't want that. And none of that, none of that matters either. Like obviously it's not a given that I would be the one to carry just because of my gender presentation. But I do think that people, when looking at same-sex relationships, they still really want to assign traditional gender roles to them to help themselves better understand. And so when I think people look at our relationship, they probably do see Steph more as like the male figure or like the father figure if we were to become parents and they see me more as the one who would be the primary caregiver. So I do find that I probably struggle a bit more with like the guilt and the pressure <laughs> of it all and I've always had a hard time with that. I think I've always felt the need to like defend myself and defend my decision and explain it to everyone. I think now I've gotten to the point where I'm just a lot more comfortable and confident in my stance and I don't necessarily feel the need to give all these disclaimers of like, oh, but it's not that I don't like kids or oh yeah, maybe I'll change my mind someday even when I know that I probably won't. And I, I feel a lot more comfortable now just saying, no, that's not what I want, that's not for me and that's fine. <laughs> I think I've definitely worried, maybe more than you as well, just like what people think of me when I say that I don't want kids and that I don't want to be a mother. There's this idea that, you know, women are bad people if they choose not to have children or that they don't like children or that they're selfish. And I think I've always kind of worried that people will think that of me when I know in my heart that that's not true. Do you yeah. ever feel like that? I don't totally feel that way, but I definitely know what you talk about when, uh, when you say that there's this idea that you know a woman is selfish for not wanting kids. Um, personally, I have worked with kids my whole life. I've always coached kids. I love being around kids, so it's not even that I don't like kids. I just don't see that for myself in my life. But um, I also know that by not having kids of our own, that I'll be more available to, you know, coach the hockey teams of our friends' <laughs> kids and, and show up for the kids in our lives. And that to me is really exciting and I really love that. Definitely. Society sees women as caregivers and people who look after everyone else and their families and their communities and they're always putting everyone else first and that's what we expect of women and that's what we put on women. That when a woman makes a decision for herself, something that makes sense for her, 
we automatically see that as selfish when it's not. And I know I need to get over worrying about people seeing me that way when I know that that's not the truth for me. But it is this idea for women that don't want to be mothers that it's selfish in some way. Yeah, luckily we're having more and more conversations about how we need to take care of ourselves in order to help others. So, you know, if I'm running on empty, I'm not useful to anyone around me. But if I'm energized and I'm taking care of myself first, then I have a lot more to give. Definitely. And that also just means like building a life for yourself that energizes you and takes care of you and makes you happy, whatever that looks like, whether it's spending a lot of time and energy on your career or something else that isn't motherhood. I think in general, we just need to get over this idea as a society that when a woman makes a decision for herself, it's selfish because it's so not selfish. And that is something that is primarily put on women. And we need to just throw that away. <laughs> Agreed. I think it's important to note too that the fact that we get this question all the time and the fact that we get a lot of pressure about becoming parents as a same-sex couple just shows our privilege because of the age we live in and because of where we live that if Steph and I did decide that we wanted to be parents, we would actually be able to, but that's not the case for all same-sex couples and I think that's really important to note. Absolutely. Because it's 2021 and because we live in Canada, we would have legal access to adoption or fertility treatments if that's something that we wanted. We would also have the financial means if that's something that we wanted. But that doesn't mean that that's the truth for all same-sex couples. It really depends on where you live and what the laws are in that country, as well as the fact that it is not financially accessible to a lot of people. It's very expensive. All the roads to parenthood for same-sex couples. Um, it's not like we could just make a baby when people say like, oh, don't you want to have kids? Yeah. It's like, even if we wanted to, we can't just have them. We can't just go home and try to get pregnant. There's a lot of things that would have to go into it. We, we know and understand what that looks like, how expensive it is, how much time it can take. We have lots of friends who have gone through that process and we've watched it. We know that it can be very trying and very difficult and it can take a really long time. It can take years and tens of thousands of dollars. It's a massive commitment. And I think that's something that everyone needs to be a little bit more aware of, especially when you're asking same-sex couples what their plans are around their family. Absolutely. I mean, really that goes for all couples, for all women, um, you know, understanding that sometimes it's harder for someone to get pregnant and it might be a process. So continuing to ask questions like when are you having a baby <laughs> might be a really loaded question when yeah. someone or a couple might be trying for years or spending a lot of money or, you know, they're, they're just unable to. So taking that into consideration is definitely really important. I think all of that too is something that really went into our decision-making process and probably goes into every same-sex couple's decision-making process because this is something we've talked about a lot and even if we did want to have kids, it's not like we can have a baby that is both of ours biologically. We would have to pursue one of these other paths to parenthood and so we've talked a lot about, you know, if we did choose this, like would we be comfortable with going the adoption route? Would we wanna go like the sperm donor route? And it's really complicated. Like there's so much that goes into that and I really think that's something that we took into consideration in our decision was, is, is that something that we would wanna do? Are any of those things something that we would want to pursue and go through together as a couple? Because yeah. you know, like what a huge trying experience that can be. Yeah, no matter what path you take, it is complicated. And you know, you have to make that decision at the time as well as have kind of a plan for the future and how, you know, how you're gonna talk about it with that child eventually. Definitely, yeah. There's also just the implications of like what it is like to raise a child as a same-sex couple and raise them in this society of ours that can be really homophobic and unaccepting and what all of that looks like. I think there are so many additional considerations for same-sex parents, so many additional things that we had to think about and talk about when coming to our decision that maybe not everyone realizes are additional considerations for us. Yeah, I mean, that being said, like some of the most amazing parents we've ever met have been same-sex couples. And I oh, definitely absolutely. think that, you know, these kids are raising have amazing lives and they're going to be amazing adults one day. Of and, course. And, you know, we fully support 
same-sex parents and their decision to have kids. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's just not for us. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's so important to note. And obviously, we are very much of the belief that love makes a family. And we don't at all think that, you know, it has to be biological or anything like that. We want to see more same-sex families and more same-sex parents choosing to go down that path toward parenthood and motherhood. And I think that all of that is really going to help the way that society sees families because there is still so much emphasis on like that traditional family and that's just not the world we live in anymore and that's just not the world i want to live in and i hope we see that change yeah the beauty of when a same-sex couple decides to have kids is that they put a lot of thought into it and they are ready to be parents they want to be parents and that's a really beautiful thing So because this is a question that we get all the time, we also get a lot of different reactions to kind of our answer and our feeling and our stance on it. And I think the main ones are that people are surprised that neither of us want to be mothers. And we're often told that we're gonna change our minds one day, which I think at this point in our 30s, it's pretty safe to say that we're not going to. I mean, of course it's valid when women do change their minds and later decide that they do actually want to have kids later in life and that's perfectly fine but I don't think that that should be the automatic response of like oh well you'll change your mind one day and then we'll all be able to understand your decision and also people telling us that we're going to be missing out on something if we stay firm in our stance that we don't want to become mothers yeah it's kind of a funny reaction because I can't really think of another example of you know an, a reaction like that to anything else in someone's life for example if somebody you know changes jobs or, or stays with their job nobody really reacts and says oh well you're gonna regret not taking that job or you're gonna regret staying with that company or right. you know we travel all the time and you know we don't tell people that they're going to regret not traveling in life there seems to be this societal permission to give people feedback give give women specifically women, women <laughs> feedback that they're going to regret not making this decision and I just yeah. really think that's unfair. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, this idea that we might regret it because we don't know what we're missing out on and this idea that we will be missing out on something. And I think a lot of people have a hard time believing that women can lead fulfilled, happy lives without becoming parents and they can find that same fulfillment from other things. I do think that People think that parenthood, if they want to do it, they think it's the most amazing, incredible thing that they've ever done. And I love that for them, yeah. but I don't think it's for everyone. And I think you should really want to do it if you're going to do it. It's such a massive decision. It's one that we don't take lightly at all. So when people say, you know, we're going to regret this choice, like we've spent so much time thinking about it, talking about it, continuing to talk about it and going over everything to do with it so that we can make a decision that we know is right for us so that we don't regret it one day so that we know this is the decision that we're going to be comfortable with for the rest of our lives yeah i think it's fair to say that we know what parenthood looks like you know we see a lot of people around us and we've um, been a part of a lot of kids lives and yeah. we know what it looks like and we think it's amazing for those people that have chosen to go down that path but we also know exactly why we've made the decision we've made. It's not like we just don't have the information and we don't know what we're missing. We know exactly what it looks like and we've just chosen to go a different way. And we don't feel like we're gonna be missing out on anything by not doing it. We are really getting to a point where we just want to be able to celebrate this decision and speak openly about it. I'm really done feeling guilty and ashamed for this choice and I want to be able to just talk about it. I don't think we see this conversation being had enough and women just being able to celebrate their choice to be child free and not see it as something that's sad or oh that's sad for them or oh they're missing out on something but just like good for women for celebrating the choice that's right for them and good for women for making choices around their own happiness there's so much pressure put on women to have kids and we really want to open up these conversations to kind of alleviate some of that guilt and shame around it definitely yeah i think it's so important it's something that i personally struggled with through my 20s and I really just want to help other people know that it is okay to make these decisions. It is okay to do what is right for you, even if other people don't yet understand it.
It is a decision that we're honestly excited about and we wanted to be able to be excited about it because in choosing not to be parents, it means that there are a lot of other things that we're going to get to do instead that we're really excited about. It just means that we're going to have more time and more energy and more resources as a couple to put into other relationships in our life, to put into our business, to show up more meaningfully for our friends and our family and for our friends' kids and for our community and for the children around us. and we just know that we're going to get to be so much more present for everyone else yeah i know for me my goal in life is to be the coolest auntie ever <laughs> and i know that i will have the capacity to do that because of the decision that we've made exactly if we were to have our own kids i know that it would take up so much of our time so much of our energy and it would mean that we wouldn't get to do these other things that we really want to do it would mean that we wouldn't have the time to show up for other people in the way that we really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And we also wouldn't be able to put so much of our energy and our resources into our business, which is something that we really love. Because ultimately it is really difficult to do it all. And so by choosing not to be parents and by choosing not to raise kids, it just means that we can do so many of the other things that we really wanna do and put our all into those things. Yeah. We really love and respect the decision of the people around us and our friends and of people we know and people that we don't know, their decisions to have children and be parents. And we just really hope that in return, everyone can respect our decision and just the decision of all women, whatever that may be, whether they are choosing to become mothers or they are choosing to be child free. Both are things to celebrate and both are things that we all need to respect. Ultimately, we really just want this to be more of a conversation. So let's get the conversation going in the comments. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you've chosen for yourself. We'd love to hear it. And also, if you've felt the same pressure that we have and how you've dealt with it, or if you've felt the same like, guilt and shame that I did for a really long time, we'd love to hear your experiences. And I think it helps us all to just know that we're not alone and we're not the only people feeling this way and that a lot of people are experiencing these same things. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching. We put out a new video every Friday, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Yes, thank you so much for being here and we'll see you next week. Dio says bye.